So in this video, we're going to demonstrate surfacing the base plate. Um, we want to make this base plate laser flat, um, perfect um, fixturing surface for all the later work that we're going to be doing on it. Um, and what we're going to be using to do that is a half inch end mill. In the previous uh, video, um, in the assembly manual, we showed you how to load this end mill up. So I've got a half inch end mill in there now. Um, and it's important to note that we're going to be taking not too much material off of here. And the reason why is the base plate positioners that were used um, during the concrete pour, they referenced off the y-axis rails, and that made these base plates as parallel as they could be um, to the y-axis rails. But it's important to remember that these are just uh, aluminum billets. They're not perfectly flat. And so uh, this base plate surfacing um, task is going to essentially remove all the highs and lows in the billet and just make a perfectly flat surface. Um, so with that being said, uh, my first step is going to be to come over to the controller and I'm going to load the program. So this program is the um, half inch and mill program that is available on the download page of our website. Uh, if you are going to be doing your surfacing with a 3 8 end mill, you'll want to download the 3 8 end mill surfacing program um, and run that. So I'm going to just go ahead and click this and hit open. And there's my program. So as you can see, it's just going to be going back and forth in the X direction, making steps in the Y direction to um, get to the entire surface. So the origin point on this program is actually the home position. So the first step here before we can run this is to home the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and home it. Okay. Next, since my home position is the same as my G54 coordinate zero, my origin of my program. What I want to do is zero out the X coordinate and zero out the Y coordinate. I'm not going to do anything with the Z yet um, because I need to actually tell the machine at what depth I want to be surfacing this base plate. So to do that, I need to go and find the lowest corner on this base plate. And I'm going to set my Z zero to that point. Because anything, any surface or any point on this base plate that is higher than that point, uh, I want to be able to surface away. So I want to be able to find, I'm going to go and find the lowest point on this base plate, set my Z to zero there, and then I'm going to run my program at that depth. That's going to be the roughing pass. Hopefully what we achieve with doing that is full cleanup of the base plate. However, it's possible that, um, you know, there may be a point on this base plate that is slightly low, in which case you're not going to get clean up if there's a low area. At that point, we'll go ahead and run the uh, program again, get full cleanup. After that, we're going to slow the feed rate down and we'll run a finishing pass to get just a nice, uh, really beautiful finish on this base plate. Um, so to find the Z0, the first step is um, to um, turn on the spindle at 1,000 RPM and we're going to go and touch off those corners. But before I do that, I think it's a good time to talk about just some basic safety uh, considerations with running the machine. So um, number one, like I got them on my head, safety glasses, super, super important. Got to have safety glasses. Whether you have an enclosure on your machine or not, safety glasses is 100% mandatory. Um, second is, you know, anytime you're interacting with the machine, you're loading tools or, or all that, make sure you got the spindle off. Um, and as a rule of thumb, you should, you should never wear gloves anywhere inside the machine because with a rotating cutting tool or cutting spindle, the last thing you want is the spindle to grab a piece of your glove. And now you're getting, you're getting your finger or your hand wrapped around the spindle. Um, it's not a good idea. Um, and then lastly, the machine should be run by one person. So you don't want to have a situation where one person is in the machine, they're doing something, and then another person is controlling the machine because it could be a scenario where there's miscommunication and one person is starting a program when the other person uh, isn't ready for that and then there's an accident can happen. So those are really the three golden rules for, for running the machine. Also, obviously you've noticed I don't have an enclosure on this machine. Typically we would run an enclosure. Um, we're obviously big fans of the enclosure because it keeps down on the mess, uh, provides a safer working environment, uh, prevents coolant from you know, getting onto the ground, pulling chips and all that. 
Uh, we've decided for this video to not install the enclosure so that we can just get good shots in this video. Um, just makes it easy, easier to video the process um, with just a little bit of extra cleanup later um, once the video is, is through. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put on my safety glasses and then I'm going to turn on the spindle to 1000 RPM. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go touch off on each corner and I'm going to go and find the low point. So what is touching off? Touching off is slowly jogging the uh, end mill down to the surface of the base plate um, and, and stopping right as contact is made. Once contact is made, I'll say, okay, I'm, at, I'm on top of the surface. I'll go ahead and zero out my Z and then I'll move on to the next corner. I'll check that. If that one is higher, if that's a higher corner, I'm not going to do anything. If it's a lower corner, I'm going to reset my Z to zero to be that on that lower corner. So I'm going to go ahead and do all four corners. At the end of it, I'm going to have my Z zero set to the lowest corner. So I'll go ahead and start with the back left. So I'm jogging down. And once I get somewhat close, I'm going to go ahead and turn down the speed to 10 inches a minute. And I'm just kind of bumping it down. Once I get a little bit closer, I'm going to, I'm now I'm going to start jogging in 1,000 increments and I'm going to wait to see a witness mark from one of the teeth on that end mill touching the base plate. Still going down in 1,000 increments. Right there. Right there is where I've touched. So I'm going to go ahead and zero my Z. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to, I'm going to come up and zero Z here. So I've come and I've, I've set my Z zero to here. Now I'm going to go ahead and continuous jog up a little bit. Now I'm going to wrap it over to the next corner. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. The critical thing is to take your time. You don't want to accidentally jog your end mill into the base plate, and that just means that you got to have more, take more to clean it off. Right there, I've touched. Okay, now I'm going to come take a look at my coordinate. And as you can see, I'm at negative 6,000. So that back right corner is actually lower than the back left corner. So since it's lower, I'm going to go ahead and zero it again. So now I'm at zero. I'm going to move up a little bit. And I'm going to wrap it over to the front right corner. and do the same process. Right there. Okay, so here I'm actually at positive 20 thousandths. So this front right corner is 20 thousandths higher than the front back, or sorry, than the back right corner. So I'm not going to do anything here. I'm not going to change my zero. I'm going to jog up a little bit and move over to the front left. Right there. Okay. This corner is higher uh, than the back right corner 
by eight and a half thousandths. So I'm not going to change my Z zero. So at this point, I'm ready to run. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and out of the way. And I'm going to take the opportunity to get the uh, flood coolant set up. I'm going to get my, my nozzle pointed. I'm going to open my flood coolant valve. And really, uh, because I don't have an enclosure, I'm just going to dribble the coolant onto the base plate. We're not taking a whole lot of off. We're not doing heavy roughing here. So a lot of coolant's really not important for this. Um, but, you know, those of you at home, hey, if you got flood coolant, you got an enclosure, uh, you know, open her up and, and uh, feel free to really dump a lot of coolant on here. So we'll go ahead and take care of that now. All right, so sorry guys, we had an audio malfunction, so my mic's not working in this clip, but I'll explain what we're doing here. I've just got the flood coolant opened up a little bit, just dripping a little bit of flood coolant on there. Um, and then next I'm gonna uh, basically uh, hit the uh, go to zero uh, button for X, Y. So now it's uh, actually auto jogging to the coordinate zero position for X and Y. And then after this, I'm going to hit the uh, go to zero button for the Z axis, and that'll drop the tool down to the plane that the uh, cutting will take place, down to the depth um, that's set in the program. So I'm just doing basically a visual check to make sure that everything looks right before I hit cycle start, and that looks good. So I can just go ahead and start this up and um, start the first roughing pass. All right, so I'm hitting cycle start here. It's going to start the sequence. Now you may have noticed that the XE carriage assembly comes with the spindle installed in the down position. In this position, it allows you to actually reach the base plate with a standard end mill or with the fly cutter. With this configuration, you get about 7.2 inches of spindle nose to table clearance. But most people are going to want to move the spindle up to get more clearance, more rigidity, and we're going to show you how to do that in a subsequent video. All right, first pass is done. It took about 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and jog it to the back and we'll blow it off and we'll take a look and see um, what, we, what we're left with here. Alrighty, so it's quite clear that we've got cleanup kind of mostly on one side. There's some areas over here where it didn't clean up. And then obviously on the, on the right side, I've got this big area that's a low spot. Um, so what I need to go do is, is touch off maybe in a few locations here, try to find the low spot. And I think once I'm there, I'll probably drop it down about another five thousandths, kind of get below this surface. Um, we'll see if we get full cleanup then. And then after that, we'll go ahead and run a finish pass. It's off camera. I went and I touched the end mill off and kind of along these low surfaces here, um, trying to find where the lowest point was. Turns out that the um, lowest point is actually in this far back area here, which is kind of to be expected based on this pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my zero point back here. But then once I touch off, I'm going to actually tell the controller that I'm at positive five thousandths. And what that'll do is when it comes and makes a pass, it's going to cut below this surface by about five thousandths. I think that's going to um, ensure that we get a good cleanup uh, roughing pass here. Once we do that, then we'll be able to jump into the finish pass. So I'm going to go ahead and touch off of there. So I'm going to spin the spindle up to a thousand. Going 1,000 increments down. Right there, I'm touching. I'm going to come back over to the controller. Looks like I'm at negative 19 thousandths, almost negative 20 thousandths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into this box instead of zeroing it. I'm going to click into this box and I'm going to enter a value of 5 thousandths. So let's think about what this means for a second. It means that my, the bottom of my end mill, the tip of my end mill is 5,000 above the surface or the depth that I'm going to go make my passes along. So my finish pass or my, my roughing pass that I'm going to complete is going to be 5,000 lower than the current position of the end mill. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just jog this up. I can turn the, um, turn, I'll turn the spindle off. And I'll be able to just go ahead and run this program again. So here we go. All right, so we had success. That second uh, facing pass uh, got us full clean up everywhere on the base plate. Uh, so now all there's left to do is just do my finishing pass. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to basically I'm going to go to G540 XY. So I'm going to hit this XY button. That moves to my XY0. And then I'm going to come down to my uh, go to G540 and Z. And that brought me down to my zero point. Now all I'm going to do here is on the DRO, I'm going to tell it that I'm actually at three thousandths. So I'm going to plug in 0 0.003. Now when it goes and runs the program, it's going to go three thousandths below this, and it's going to do a finish pass taking three thousandths off the surface. Um, three thousandths is a really good, um, really good finish pass for for doing these base plates. And the nice thing about it is that. Um, if any time in the future you need to go and resurface your base plate, all you got to do is take, you know, three or four thousandths off and you got a perfectly clean, brand new base plate again. Um, you can almost do it infinitely. There's enough stock on there to do a lot of, a lot of passes at three thousandths down. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, um, run this program. And one thing that's important to note is I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, slow the feed rate down to about 60%. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And that'll just, um, uh, reduce my chip load, um, get a, give me a little better finish. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. <laughs> 